Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends, share the link, and let us do some study for now. Uh, the topic is not something really, uh, something new, but always we have a questions, and the questions is in this. The more you think deeply about the stories of Muhammad, the more you come to questions, or the more you, let us say, the same story you read, uh, for sure depend on the person. <clears throat> some people, they have a very uh, deep uh, vision, uh, and I mean like they can read behind the words and they investigate every statement. And some people, they just read. They don't really notice anything wrong. But the story of Muhammad about him being a prophet, how Muhammad, he received his message. Uh, I find the story is kind of very weird. Uh, and you will see even Muhammad, he is confused. You know, I was in some locations in the world, and uh, any internet now, there's many people believe in magic, and you're like you know, you buy a doll, and then you put needles in the doll, and this magic have name like some um, some they call it voodoo, in, uh, in the Middle East they call it sahar, uh, and even the Muslim they say that the Prophet himself was bewitched. So the life of Muhammad is really full of uh, crazy stuff and today we are going to ask to few questions and i hope muslims will be able to answer us this is the story of muhammad himself reporting what happened to him when the angel came to him but if you read the whole story you don't see anywhere it says an angel came to him i mean where where muhammad he said an angel came to me where the angel, he says, I am an angel. Nowhere. You know what I mean? So isn't it weird that neither the angel, neither the one who met that person, they say that he's an angel? If you read with me carefully here, Muhammad saying, speaking about the divine inspiration uh, to Allah, this is Aisha reporting about what Muhammad told her. Uh, he never had a dream but that it come true like bright day light he used to go in seclusion and between two bracket in the cave of Hera where he used to worship Allah alone for many days so this guy he looked like camping there he used to take with him the uh, in, in his journey uh, food you know so he can stay longer and then he came back to his wife Khadija etc till suddenly the truth descended who, who is the one who descended the truth who is this one who is called the truth Any Muslim can tell us who is Mr. Truth? Remember, it's not even Muhammad saying this guy, the truth, he came. This is Aisha speaking now. Enter the truth, descended. So if this is an angel, how the angel can be called the truth? One of the names of Allah, that Al-Haq, this is what she is saying, Al-Haq. If you go in Arabic here, it says, this is one of Allah names so how the Muslims they say that this is an angel when he have or he is carrying the title of Allah the truth and this is the same title the Messiah he called himself with he says I am the truth so the one who came to Muhammad according to Aisha it was the truth and then uh, Aisha she say uh, the truth descended upon him. He was in the cave of Hera. The angel came to him and asked him to read. Okay, who is the one saying the word angel for the first time in this story? Aisha. Aisha. Then here it says, <clears throat> So the angel came to him and asked him to read. So the angel did not say to him, Salam, Assalamu Alaikum, <clears throat> Peace to you, Shalom. No, no, no. 
the angel came to him and the first statement he said read the prophet he did not ask him who are you which is very weird I mean you are in the middle of the cave and there's nobody there and suddenly there's a man because remember this uh, person he appeared to him as a man <coughs> and this man he's saying to him read and Muhammad he said to him according to the Muslim translation I do not know how to read the Prophet of Allah did not Muhammad report in the story the angel cut me but if you go in Arabic you don't see the word angel so who is the one adding the word angel this is the translation why because Aisha in the beginning she said the angel so obviously this is the angel but Muhammad did not say the word angel and we will see why Muhammad did not say that <clears throat> so there is no angel take this one off so then he cut me forcefully and he pressed me so hard that I could not bear it anymore the angel he squeezed Muhammad he hold him very very tight and he Muhammad even cannot breathe then he released me again and asked me to read so first time he asked him to read Muhammad told him I cannot read this person this man he squeezed him and he ordered him for the second time to read I replied I do not know how to read whereupon and you see there's no angel this is uh, Aisha she is adding the word angel where he whereupon he cut me again and he uh, uh, pressed me the second time till I could not bear it no more so the same process repeat again then he released me and asked me again to read but again I replied I do not know how to read between two bracket there's a this is the translation or sh what sh shall I read so here you see the Muslims are confused about what Muhammad said did he say really I cannot read or he was saying what I shall read now if we say Muhammad saying what I shall read uh, this actually this is very fit very very much with the Arabic text but that would be stupid too because if the, uh, if, the if Muhammad saying to him what I shall read uh, why the angel is squeezing him anyway just tell him what he should read <laughs> and if Muhammad saying I do not know how to read so why the angel squeezing him a second time and third time the guy he just told you he do not know how to read you know what I mean either way if Muhammad meant what I shall read or Muhammad meant I do not know how to read both of them proving to us that the story is stupid because if Muhammad did not know how to read so why the angel is squeezing him again and again and again and each time he says to him read the guy he just told you I do not know how to read if Muhammad saying what I shall read so why the angel keep you know squeezing him and keep saying to him read the guy he told you read what so here you see the story is very stupid in the structure imagine <clears throat> you are a police or detective and you are investigating a crime and there's a guy he came to the house of other guy and the first guy said oh this guy he came to my house and he told me read and he squeezed me and then he let me and he squeezed me again I told him I cannot read I mean this is not convincing to anyone because what this one what, what this guy want this guy he's saying to Muhammad read he all what he want from him is to read correct what is the what is the position of this story that the angel supposedly or the supposedly the one who called him the truth he want Muhammad to read so what is the point of all of this story the guy he told you I do not know how to read and if he meant what I shall read still he told you okay what I will read so what this is for about uh, squeeze him three times and why three times you will notice that in Islam everything happened three times this religion is anti-trinity but it is the most trinity religion Muhammad when he say assalamu alaikum to people he say it three times 
when you take an oath you have to say it three times when you do ablution you have to wash your face your hands your nose your you know you put water in your nose which is very disgusting and you put uh, uh, in your ears uh, three times I mean, why three times why everything is three times three times in Islam is the number of perfection and I challenge any Muslim to say this not true even when Allah he uh, introduce himself in the Quran he say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim so even the God of Islam introduced himself by three names and even the total numbers of Allah the God of Islam is 99 names which is multiply of number three So what Muhammad is trying to say to us, maybe that the angel was squeezing him three times to make him a perfect prophet because number three is the perfection of God. Uh, last time you said Muhammad ran away when they came to kill him. Uh, Muhammad uh, uh, Khalid uh, Khan aren't you Muslim you say that when Muhammad the the people of Quraysh they wanted to kill him he asked his cousin Ali to sleep in his bed go on search in Google to uh, two words you will find it you see you are an ignorant about your religion it take you two minutes search in Google Ali the cousin of Prophet Muhammad he slept in the bed of Muhammad so the Prophet can escape so he can what? Escape. That's me, he run. Is that true? Show me you liar. I mean, when you see the Muslim challenge, and look, he's dead now. Are you there? Are you there, Khan? Why you don't call me? And I will make you read it. Do you care? Do you dare to call me? Hmm? And not only that, Muhammad he used Ali, and Ali at that time he was a kid. Is that right? Hello. Mr. Khan, are you there? In the front of everybody, if you call me, I will make you read it live on air. So Muhammad, not only he did run, he used the child to sleep in his bed so they will enter his room supposedly and they will kill him. What kind of a hero? He asked a child to die for him so he can run. He did escape from them trying to kill him Ali says he had best to sleep at the <laughs> look at the guys look at the answer just to show you the comedy of the Mohammedan one of them accused me that the Prophet he did not run and the other one he says yes he ran and look at the uh, look at the uh, excuse he escaped from them trying to kill him Ali says he had the best sleep at that night <laughs> But he was a kid. What kind of a hero? He asked a child to, to sleep in his bed. So when they enter the room, they will think it's Muhammad and they will kill him. So he risked a child so he can run. The risk, he risked the life of a child. Muhammad, he have no ethic of any brave man. That is not an ethic of any good man. Asking a child to sleep in your bed so you can run away. And this child will die for you. Aren't you ashamed of the story? Anyway, they are not ashamed. It's very clear. Now we go back to the topic. Are you there, Mr. Khan? Mr. Khan is bye-bye now. He don't want to challenge me no more. Mr. Khan, are you there? If you watch a movie and you have, let us say, uh, like any of those American uh, fake heroes, who in the movie he shoot everybody and nobody kill him whatever you know and he asked somebody he is a kid he knew that people are coming to kill him 
and he said to the kid he sleep in my bed okay sleep in my bed don't move so the people will think he is inside the room and they will put their sword inside his stomach what kind of a hero this hero is obviously Muhammad he have no ethic this is not an ethic of a hero now we go back so when the angel he squeezed Muhammad a three time and each time he says to him read and Muhammad either he is he meant according to the Muslim translation as you see I do not know how to read or what I shall read either one is a stupid statement stupid statement why because this is destroying the story if the angel he been taught already by Muhammad that Muhammad he do not know how to read let us say Allah did not tell the angel that Muhammad do not know how to read and remember the angel is repeating the word of Allah this is not the word of the angel Allah said to the angel says this to Muhammad supposedly so Allah is talking here not the angel the angel is just delivering delivering the word remember the Quran the Quran it is the word of Allah and this is read read is the word of Allah you find it in the Quran so Allah says to Muhammad through them through the tongue of the, uh, the the man who came to him supposedly the angel read okay question do Allah knew that Muhammad do not know how to read obviously he do not know And look what uh, Muhammad Khan said. Of course, anyone, including children, would defend his prophet. <laughs> a second ago, he's saying to me, I challenge you, liar, the prophet did not run away. <laughs> All right. Then it says the prophet was being embraced for the mighty task. Okay, hold on, hold on, guys. Look at this. Look, look at this madness. And this is ex uh, excuse. Why he was embraced by the angel? He was being embraced for the mighty task and via this action the prophet was taught severity of so now if somebody squeezed me so hard I became a hero hello if somebody squeezed you three times that will be you make you tough and what the prophet would have to be be squeezing why people they will squeeze him after that every day is Muhammad going to join a competition of a squeezing so the angel is training him how to be squeezed? I mean the Muslim answers are really hilarious The angel is teaching him how to be tough by squeezing What this have to do with the prophethood? Do you think if I get married and my wife she squeeze me every day I will get tougher? I never thought about it this way. I think I'm going to get married. I will find a woman. She's really she is really strong. You know, she was practice uh, heavy lifting. And she will squeeze me every day. Three time in the morning before breakfast, three time after breakfast. Three times before lunch and three times after lunch. Three times before dinner and three times after dinner. And then I became a prophet. And I'm ready for uh, <clears throat> for the fight. What is this? Are you serious? They are desperately trying to defend something silly like this. So the story here does not make sense. And, you know, in the, in the same time, you will see Muhammad Qasim is not answering uh, why he is saying to him, I do not know how to read and yet the angel is still squeezing him and keep saying to him read let me ask uh, Muhammad Qasim did the angel give Muhammad something to read did he give him something to read anyone Any Muslim can give us uh, an until now the angel he did not say he's an angel 
I mean, this is the whole story is weird. You see the title of our video, who is the one who came to Muhammad? We do not know. Muhammad himself do not know. If you if you read the rest of the story, you will see Muhammad, he went to his wife. Listen carefully. After the angel, he squeezed him three times. And no Muslim can tell us why three. What about four? If three times will make him tough, four will make him tougher. Five will make him better. Ten will make him even more strong. Why, why he stop with the three? Trinity. Then, uh, he said to him, read in the name of your Lord. Okay, hold on, hold on. So he squeezed him three times just to say to him, read in your in the name of your Lord. And he created the man from a clot. But the man is not a creator from a clot. Read in the name of your Lord, the one who taught the man by the pen. But Muhammad ibn Ibrahim been taught by the pen. What is this? If you go in the Quran and you go to the chapter which is mentioned here, this is supposed to, and by the way, here a very clear proof that the Quran is not a trustworthy uh, book uh, because, because Muhammad, according to Muslims, not all of them, some of them they say uh, there is other verse which came to Muhammad first. But most of them they say this is the first chapter Muhammad he received. It's called the chapter of the clot. Why they call it the chapter of the clot? Because Allah told him man is created from a congealed dead blood, which is very stupid to say. So from the second sentence, Allah, he said, he proved to us that he's false. Because a human being is not created from a dead blood. And look here, just to show you how the first statement Allah, he said to Muhammad, it is a stupid. Why? Look at this. Proclaim or read. Which one? The Muslim until now they're confused. Is it proclaim or it is read? If it's proclaim, what proclaim mean? Let us go to Google. You see, Google, Prophet Google. What proclaim mean? Let us see. Announce officially. Uh, declare something. Consider important the do of empress. But this is false. You know, the word Iqra. It's coming from uh, the Aramaic. This is not even an Arabic word. This is from the, the word Qarra Wara'a. Qarra is you saying something with your tongue and your lips, and you see. So you have to be reading something. This is a false translation. So it has to be read. And this is a false fiction translation. Okay, let us say for the sake of argument, the angel he's saying to him, read or even recite. But recite would, would not work because recite me repeating something in your memory. But let us say, repeat after me, repeat. But it doesn't make sense if we say repeat because Muhammad saying, I cannot repeat. Well, yes, it's stupid because he just said to you repeat and you say I can't repeat you just said the word This is exactly repeating You know what I mean So what what he said to him The Arabic says it clearly which is coming from the Aramaic that this is me and read 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 in the name of your Lord, okay, who is your Lord? Who is the Lord we are talking about? Do you see here the first statement in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful? Okay, question. Why Allah did not say in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful? You see, this is not number one. Do you see it, guys? Muslim adding verses to the Quran. Do you see it? Why it's there? 
if Allah did not say in the name of Allah why you put it there this is this is a corruption secondly why Allah did not say in the name of Allah anyone knows how Muhammad will know who is this God he is talking to you know they will say to you later he will tell him okay but he is saying to him read in the name of your Lord that's mean Muhammad already is a believer in Allah but that this is totally contradiction for what the Quran said the Quran says that Muhammad is not a believer in Allah the Quran says for he found you lost and he guided you who is the one who guided who Allah guided Muhammad from what from being lost so if Muhammad was already a believer in Allah actually I have a better verse than this verse from Hold on. Let us see. There is a verse saying it clearly that Muhammad he do not know what is faith. He do not know what is faith, and faith never enter his heart. Let us read it together. Hey, by the way, if there is any Muslim would like uh, to call me. Uh, Let us see if we can open Skype. All right. Skype is loading. Muhammad he never know what faith and faith never enter his heart who want to call me and he want to read for me a verse proving that anyone anyone nobody So how the Quran says, read in the name of your Lord, and yet Muhammad at that moment, he do not have a Lord. Which Lord we are talking about? Anyone? I'm waiting for a Muslim to say hello. There's tons of verses in the Quran confirming that Muhammad he is you know in the worst scenario he wasn't or the best scenario he was an atheist who wanna call me hmm who is willing to call me So from the beginning, you see, I will save the verse to, to, to the side. So if a Muslim, he call us so we can read together and we will see that Muhammad, he do not know what he is talking about. What Lord? And shouldn't this Lord, he present himself and shouldn't this angel say, I am an angel and my name is etc. And who is the one who sent him? As you see in the story, this angel, he said nothing. He did not even say he's an angel. Then after he cut him many time, Muhammad, he went to his wife. He returned with inspiration, 
Okay, what is mishulashin? He just uh, what he heard, right? Supposedly, right? And look what happened. His neck masculus twitching with terror till he entered upon Khadija and said, cover me, cover me. They covered him till his fear was over and then he said, Khadija, what's wrong with me? Who was a Muslim when I tell us what's wrong with Muhammad? Anyone who is a Muslim is willing to tell us what's wrong with Muhammad? Why Muhammad is terrified even after the angel he went away? What happened exactly? And why what's wrong with his neck? Did, did this guy he's squeezing from his neck? Did this angel try to kill him? Any Muslim? Why Muhammad is suffering badly in his neck? You see, as you see, the muscles of his neck are really in a very bad shape. What happened exactly? And do you see, it says his neck musculus twitching. Why? The prophet was being embraced mighty task. We got that. Okay, we got that What mighty task we show him what is the answer? Why? Why? The masculus of the prophet in his neck is a twitching with terror Anyone knows? Hey, Muhammad Khan, you are just a kid, my friend. You see, I'm an Arab. Do you know what does that mean? That means after 1400 years of Islam exists in the Arabian land, we are there. And not only that, just yesterday, Algeria closed 12 mega churches in Algeria, trying to stop Christianity from growing. Did you hear the news? Algeria. They close 12 mega churches. Tens of thousands attend them. They think by doing that, they can stop Christianity. You try, just try. All of Morocco, all of Algeria, Algeria is converting to Christianity as never before. Keep it dreaming, my friend. And not to mention Saudi Arabia and Indonesia. Did you see how many people left Islam just in the last 24 hours of your life on air? This is narration shows the prophet was a truthful that his reaction was normal my friend his reaction was very normal that's true but that's uh, proving that he's sick Muhammad he have a disease it's called epilepsy go and read the description of epilepsy and you will see that Muhammad is suffering from the same thing Muhammad he saw nobody Muhammad is a person he have a double per, uh, personality and he is mentally ill don't make stuff up no we can prove it my friend we can prove it uh, you know okay if we search now for symptoms for this uh, disease if we search for it let us do that actually I just searched in Google and this is not a uh, you know, Christian you know read it read carefully temporary confusion and we will show you that in the hadith he asked his wife what's wrong with me a story in spell uncontrollable jerking and movement of arms and legs 
Lose, actually, there's more. Let us read more. Let us read more. Hmm. And this, again, this is not, have nothing to do with the Christians. This is not an article made for your prophet. This is about the disease itself. Let us see. Caesar symptoms can be very widely. Some people with epilepsy simple share uh, blankly for a few seconds during the Caesar while others repeatedly twitch their arms and legs. Having single Caesar does not mean that they have epilepsy. Okay. So there's many, uh, uh, but let's see some of them. Foshal Caesar. When uh, the Caesar appear result of abnormal behavior, it's like a brain uh, called Foshal uh, Potular Caesar, those Caesar fall into two categories. All right. Here you can read. And let us go to the neck. Clonical Caesar, which is affecting the neck, this Caesar affect usually the neck, the face, and the arms. Do you see it? Do you see it? And not only that, it affects their hearing. It affects their hearing. Let us go to more. Uh... <clears throat> they hear voices. And this is one of the symptoms of epilepsy. Do you see it? They hear voices. Like what? They hear voices of a bell, as an example. But not necessarily only that. They hear voices. They hear people speaking to them. So uh, they have a disorder, mental disorder. And Muhammad, he even heard and he received his inspiration as a sound of a bell. Is that true? Yes. They do that. Do you see it? Symptoms such as a music and will defend the human voices were reported. The musical education involved from bills. Bills. Do you see it? Okay, hold on. Let us go and see what Muhammad received. Did Muhammad receive the God of Allah talking to him, inspiration as a sound of a bell? Let us see if this is true. Yeah, uh, Muhammad, you see, we are putting all the dots together. You are saying to me, just because he heard the sound, no, they, we will put all things together. We will put all things together and people will see if this is true or not. You see, look what Muhammad said. Just because it's something usually uh, 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 happened to certain people does not mean they had epilepsy. That's true. But look, everything have to do with epilepsy, epilepsy fit with Muhammad. Your prophet here received inspiration as a sound of a bell. Do you see it? Do you see it, Muhammad? There are those who they are suffering from the epilepsy. They have the problem. They hear, they have voices. And one of the voices they hear, it can be the bell, sound of a bell in their head. But nobody can hear it, only them. And look, Muhammad is saying clearly that this is the hardest come to him. This is what? This is the hardest. Why it's the hardest? This is physical hard. He suffer with it. 
Does it say that this is something the hard, the harshest, the more hard on him? It says that. Why is that? Read carefully. The angels sometimes come to me with the voice which resembles the sound of a ringing bell. I want Muhammad, if you don't mind, to tell us why the angel sound resemble the sound of a bell for Muhammad. Doctor did not recognize supernatural. My friend, this is this is not about doctor. This guy is obviously sick. You see, are trying to escape. With, no doctors, they recognize that they, they always, even if atheist doctor, they say this is a miracle. They could not explain something. They say it's a miracle. Even atheist doctor, they say it's a miracle you are alive because they could not explain it. So don't go there. And who said doctors don't recognize? There's millions of doctors are Christians, scientists. So the angel sometime comes to me with the voice which resembles the sound of a ringing bell. Anyone can tell me how the angel communicate by with Muhammad by a sound of a bell? Muhammad is a human. He is not a computer machine. Why the angel communicating with Muhammad by a bell? And obviously Muhammad, he ate the bell. And look, in different place, Muhammad, he said that the bell is the musical instrument of shaitan. Like what? How you say in one place that the bell is the music instrument of shaitan and you say that, shit, uh, uh, the, the, the angel communicate with you with the sound of a bell. Here you see the mental issues of Muhammad because there is no way that this is the a musical instrument of Satan, which is very funny. And yet the angel, he come to him with the same musical instrument. That's mean Muhammad was hearing the, sh the shaitan. Either you have to say here that this statement of Muhammad is a lie. Muhammad is being foolish. He's not saying the truth. That the, the angel, you know, the, the shaitan, he have nothing to do with the with the bill or the other one is the stupid one which one hmm? any Muslim how Muhammad he come to this uh, knowledge that shaitan he used the bill and what the shaitan he do with it it's just because the Christian they use the sound of a bell for their church. In the top of that, the Muslims confirm to us not only Muhammad he receive voices which is weird, like as you see the sound of a bell, and claiming that the inspiration of Allah. Okay, how the inspiration of Allah came to him as a sound of a bell, and then it became Arabic. How he translate the bell into Arabic? In the top of that, the Muslims, they clearly, clearly say, and they agree, including his wife, that Muhammad has or had bewitched. What bewitched mean? Hmm? What uh, what be which mean? Any Muslim can tell me. In the old time and during the time of the Arab, at that time they don't understand how a, a, a person sometimes he looked normal, and sometimes he looked stupid or crazy. So they say that he was bewitched. But this is epilepsy. This is exactly one of the symptoms of someone he is suffering from mental illness
Any Muslim have an answer? Magic was done into him. My friend, this is not his code magic. This is stupid of you to say. This is number one. Number two, let us say magic was done to him. That's mean he is a fake prophet because isn't it the Quran say Allah protect him from mankind and genie? So how the magic can control him? That's mean the promise of Allah is false. And look, the magic which is controlling Muhammad is affecting his brain, nothing else. Guys, do you notice that? The Prophet, he imagined that he had done a thing which in fact he had not done. Where did this imagination happen? It's in the brain. Again, this hadith confirmed that Muhammad is affected in his brain. You want to call it magic, people are laughing. But this hadith confirmed one thing for sure. Muhammad, he have a mental issue. Because this is affecting his brain, nothing else. Uh, Connie saying, Muhammad sex addict, okay, whatever. Epilepsy, shafariza, blah, 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 but you know, but obviously Muhammad is suffering from mental illness. It's clear. He hear voices of angel as a bell. Okay, let me ask you, Muhammad. Why the angel is communicating with the prophet by the sound of a bell? Why? He was a bell? A smart Muslim, he posted a comment last time. He said, no, no, no. We have to be honest here. It says here, come to me with the voice of which resembled the sound of a ringing bell. He says, this is not the sound of the angel. This is the sound which come with the angel. Do you agree with that, Muhammad? Muhammad, do you agree with this answer? That the, the sound of the bell is not the sound of the angel. This is the sound. This is not the inspiration itself. This is a sound come with the inspiration. Do you agree with that? Did Muhammad receive the inspiration as a sound of a bell or the inspiration come with the sound of a bell? No, in the Bible, epilepsy is not a demon. That's not true. Demon is something totally different. Any Muslim? Did the angel spoke to Muhammad with the sound of a bell? And this is the inspiration of Allah? Or the inspiration of Allah came with the sound of a bell, which means like there's a background? This, the Muslim trying to defend they say this is a background this is not the voice of the angel what do you think Muhammad was it do you know guys why Muhammad is not answering why Muhammad is not answering did Muhammad receive Quran as a sound of a bell or the sound of a bell was the background when the angel he speak like a uh, like Santa Claus. What do you think? Any Muslim? That was a certain kind of a bill, a bill. No, Muhammad, he received it as a bill. And let me get you busted. No problem. <sighs> Read carefully. How does the Wahi inspiration come to you? Somebody asked Muhammad. How the Quran, this is Quran. How the Quran come to you? He says, at time it's come to me like the ringing of a bell. Do you see it? <laughs> Quran come to him as a bell? 
And how Muhammad make the bill a sound in Arabic? So it's obvious that Muhammad is so nobody. This guy is mentally ill. He saw no one, he heard no one, he is just hearing voices in his head. As simple as that. Allah, he gave Muhammad Quran. This is how God, he gave Quran, uh, his book to. Did Allah give the, uh, the Torah to Moses like a sound of a bell? And how Moses will translate the bell sound into uh, Hebrew? <laughs> Imagine somebody came and ring the house my 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 doorbell. How I'm going to translate that to you into words in English as an example? What do you think? My friend, salt water and stupid water mix. Okay, we can debunk it later. We have a topic. Don't be like a child. How the sound of a bell became Arabic, I want to understand. That's all. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm not asking for a miracle. Allah gave him, as you see, Allah gave him a sound of a bell. Muhammad is an Arab man. I am an Arab man. Okay, he gave me a bell. How I'm going to make Quran now from the bell sound? Doesn't make sense especially the Quran says not me the Quran says that Allah he never sent the book except he will never send a prophet with a book unless with the tongue of the people which is the people of the Prophet so to believe in Muhammad's story that he hear a ring that's mean the people of Muhammad their language is a ring See this is Quran, chapter 14, verse number 4. Why? So they might understand. The Quran is saying that Allah will never send the messenger to any nation unless he is from the nation and speak the tongue of the people so they might understand. He might make it clear for them. Okay, Muhammad, he hear Quran or he heard the bell. He heard the bell. Muhammad now is going to tell his people the verse of the bell. What he will say? Jungle bells, jungle bells, jungle all the way. Muhammad, I am Muhammad, I am prophet all the way. Hey, Muhammad bells, what is that? What is that? So when somebody tried to defend and say Muhammad was not mentally ill, obviously this is not true. All reference around us proving from the Quran, from the Hadith, from this is your books. Not, you see, until now we did not use a single statement which is made by Christians or Jews. And Muhammad, he went far in his illusion to the point he think he is having, a, having sex, but in fact he is not. So it's not only about like he heard something. No, things went so far. Look at this. It's not about something he think he's his and not only that. Look, Muhammad obviously he's mentally sick. Look at this. Look at this statement. This is a prophet teaching. My uncle asked Allah Apostle about a person who imagined he had passed wind. During the prayer, Allah Apostle said he should not leave his prayer unless he hear it or he smell it. This is God teaching. This is God teaching God Allah. He told Muhammad You should not leave the prayer if you fart unless you hear it or you smell it. This is Allah taught Muhammad that Wahi is not a Quran it could be a hadith both are wahi that is a stupid of you my my friend to say Because the hadith is not the hadith the Quran is a hadith and wahi is mean inspiration, literally. So it have to be from God.
So it doesn't matter what it is. Let us say it is a hadith, as you say, or it's Quran, it still is stupid. Because Allah is communicating Muhammad with the sound of a bell. And you are saying to me, the like the sound of a bell, it doesn't say the like. It says, comes to me like the ring of a bell. What does that mean? He is just explaining to him how it come. How, how like what? The guy is asking like what? How it come to you? Like a ring of a bell. So this is exactly what he heard. A ring of a bell. The other man, he did not hear it. So he's explaining to him how it is like a ring of a bell. What he received, he received the inspiration. And when you say wahi, it means it's coming from God. So God communicate with Muhammad by a sound of a bell. How crazy is that? Hmm? And this is affect Muhammad to the point that even his sexual life is badly affected. To the point, his wife she said that the prophet continued for such and such a period, imagining that he had sexual intercourse with his wife. In fact, he did not. So this man he lost his mind totally. And epilepsy, by the way, have not like a, there, there's a stages. There's stages for epilepsy. There's a story where Muhammad, when he was a child, he fell almost dead in the ground, and the one who, uh, his family, you know, they want to get rid of him because he was sick. Nobody will take care of him. They gave him to the swimmer to take care of him. So when he failed because of the epilepsy, the woman, she was afraid that he will die between her hands. So she sent him back to her, his family. The story of cutting off the chest of the prophet happened supposedly twice in his life. Once when he was a child and once he was a man. And here the Muslim, they say that Muhammad was under the influence of a magic. The magic is controlling the brain of a prophet. During this time, Muhammad, he imagined how many times that he saw an angel. Additional proof that Muhammad is always proven to be mentally ill. Not only he said the crazy stuff, but look at this. Muhammad, he gave an order for the Muslims in the morning. He changed his order afternoon or sometime the day after he tell them Allah told me to do this all of you second day he changed the law if you go to the interpretation which is made by Muslims remember that we are not the one is giving interpretation for the Quran if we go to the interpretation we will find the following I remember this is the Muslims explaining the Quran, not us. Chapter 2, verse 102. Additional proof that Muhammad, actually uh, not uh, one, 106, sorry, 106. Uh, and this is additional proof that Muhammad is mentally ill. Because if God really is speaking to Muhammad, there's no way God will change his command just like second day about Allah. You see, this is not about uh, how many cup of water you drink. This is about God giving commands. Read carefully. This is a chapter 2, verse 106. Interpretation of the Imam, the Sheikh, Tafsir Jalalain, one of the biggest names in the history of Islam. When the disbeliever began to be, be, began to dry to dry uh, to, uh, uh, the matter of abrogation, saying <laughs> that one day Muhammad he enjoined his companion uh, the, to do one thing, and then the second day he forbid it. 
Isn't it clear that this guy is suffering from mental illness? Do you see it? Which prophet in the history of a prophethood? He says something in the morning, afternoon, he changes his mind. He gave them an order, but he say, Allah told me. Okay, Allah told me. Okay, I will obey. Second day, he says, forbid it. I forbid it. But Allah told you. It was just yesterday. Isn't it? This is a clear evidence that Muhammad is mentally ill. It's obvious. Right? Hey, Muhammad Qasim, you cannot refute me. This is your Islamic books. If Muhammad is not mentally ill, how in the world he gave an Allah by Allah in the morning, second day, he changed it less than 24 hours. How this is can be from God? Do God knew that this is wrong? Don't God, he knew that this is not right. So why he changed his mind? So Allah is correcting himself or Muhammad correcting himself? Actually, not all the Jalalain. I mean, we all discuss. They are saying the same. This is the same. Uh, the book of Asbab and Nuzul, go to Ibn Kathir. All of them, they agree that Muhammad in the morning, he says something. Afternoon, he says something else. Obviously, this is mental illness. This is like a Trump sometime. Trump, in the morning, he say the Kurdish are our friend. Afternoon, they say he, they are terrorists. What is that? Is it obvious? Now, the guy who asked me about the verse in the Quran, saying that Muslims, they say, I have videos about it, my friend. Go and watch my videos. I have thousands of videos. Just type the, the mixed water and type Christian Prince next to it. Why you give me a headache? All right. All what is called science in the Quran is a big fat lie. Actually, tomorrow we have supposedly a debate with Dr. Hassan, who is a genius. I think he worked in NASA, but in the Islamic NASA which is using a mule to go to the heaven. All right. So the Muslim, they say that uh, uh, the Quran speak about the fresh water and the salty water, they don't mix. The fact, the verse there does not say that. Let us see what it says. It is he who let it free. Is the guy who asked me about it, is he there? Are you there, my friend? The one who's asking me to answer about this? Don't tell me you asked me to answer it and you left. Where is the gentleman who asked me to answer it? All right. He has let free the two bodies of the flowing water meeting together. The translation is false. In Arabic, it says, Maraj al يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان بحرين two seas this is a false translation let us find a different translation use the exact word says seas it is two seas this is Abdul Yusuf Ali let us see the front Abdul hey look at this this is the Muslim translation now change where is the word seas and the other one is gone this guy here is saying the salt and the water which is sweet actually this is true but this is not about what you think in the ocean and the, this is not we will explain to you 
what I say is true. I mean, this is what the verse is saying. He has let loose the two seas. One is salty and one is a fresh. Meeting together. Meeting together. Between them, there is a barrier which none can of them can transgress. In Arabic, the word is barzakh. And barzakh means a piece of land. So this verse actually teaching something stupid. Muhammad is explaining how we have fresh water and we have salty water. He think that there is a barrier between the fresh water and the salty water. And both of them, they are a sea. Both of them, they are a sea. Sea of water. Sea is a fresh water. One sea is a fresh water. And one sea is a salty water. And Allah, he put a barrier between them and they never met. How we can find that this is what is meant? Let us go and see the interpretation. You see, always when somebody says something to you, get him busted from the interpretation. Muslims, they have their books. They can lie as much they want. They can fabricate as much they want, but it doesn't work. The word barzakh is an Arabic word, mean a piece of land. And not only a piece of land, it has to be a dry land. And it is always separating between two uh, body of water. So if we go in the interpretation, we will find the following. This is a chapter 55, verse number 19, and we go to the Ibn Kathir. All right, this is the Quran interpretation of Ibn Kathir. I will put in the screen for you. What happened here? The interpretation stop. It should come all the way to verse 19, 20. So where is the try, try interpretation for it? It it must be there. Okay, hold on. 14 so maybe from 14 to 26 okay let's go to 14 all right because this uh, this uh, website does not have like a verse by verse it's like many verses in the same time here we go he has maraja the two seas or let them lose according to ibn abbas meeting together ibn ziyad says he prevent them from meeting by dividing a barrier he placed between them he separate them the two seas are the fresh and salty water. The former coming from running rivers. We discuss this topic in Surah Al-Furqan, and when we explain it, and here he continues saying, and it is he who has let the, 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 let the free the two seas. One is palatable and sweet, and the other one is salty and bitter. And he has set the barrier, a complete partition between them. My friend, salty water and fresh water in the sea, they always mix. If you don't believe me, just go to your kitchen, put some salty water in a cup, make salt, mix it with a cup, and then they bring another cup of a fresh water and put them in one container. You will see they are mixed immediately. So whoever says this not that this that they don't mix, it's a lie. And the, the, what the science speak about, that it takes time for a current of water to mix because there's always a current. Otherwise, if you drop a cup of water, which is a fresh in the sea, will disappear immediately, will, will, will immediately mix. So this is not science. Science. Secondly, the Quran is saying here a mistake, scientific mistake, because the Quran is saying that Allah, he separated the land. He made the land as a separation between the, the, the sea and the water, which is a fresh. And they never met. But this is not true. Look at this. Between them a barrier, which none of them can transgress. None of them can, which means forever. That's it. Salty water will stay salty water. Fresh water will stay fresh water. Meaning, he has placed a barrier of land between those two types of water. So they do not transgress upon each other, which would spoil the rest of it. You see it? Are you there, my friend, the one who asked me to explain it? Do you see how they lie to you? So this verse is not only stupid, 
it is teaching something even kids cannot believe in because all the fresh water we have is coming from the salty water they are not separated is that true while the Quran saying that the fresh water and the salty water they are two seas and they never transgress that's it do you see it how we can believe in such a thing so Danish did you agree with them or they are lying to us so what if there's a video what's wrong with you are you stupid or what what does this have to do with this this is totally different meaning are you mental <laughs> there's a video brother there's a video this is the river in the ocean you never see a river in the ocean because there is a current of water you never been in a delta so the reason they are you always see this water different color because there is a current more water is coming it's like like if you open the sewage you know many cities in the world they have a very bad uh, sewage system so they are in the beach area so then the sewage come and the water will look dirty but are they mixing they are mixing but always there is dirty water because always people they are pissing and pooping so there's more water is coming but what the Quran is saying that they are two separated water by a dry land the video you saw there's a dry land between them Danish the video you saw there's a dry land between them no but the Quran is speaking about a dry land between them so what do you mean but there is a video they are making fun of you are you stupid or what but there is a video people are fool sadly people are fools stupid nobody wants to use his brain The Quran saying actually the opposite. The Quran saying they never ever transgressed, they never met. But science never says that. Salty water and fresh water, they always mix. Look at this idiot. Barzak does not mean a dry land. Isn't it in front of you, Abdul? Isn't it in front of you? Isn't it this is Ibn Kathir? <laughs> look at this I show it to them from their books and yet he says to me it does not mean a dry land madness stupidity stupidity is science read it the Quran saying they will never transgress they will never ever mix and this is absolutely false look carefully so they do not transgress upon each other do you see it And let us go to the dictionary so we can love together. Shall we? There we go. I feel sorry for the Muslims. You know, they are poor people trying to defend their stupid cult, but it doesn't work. Here we go. This is your Islamic dictionary. I will put it in the screen. And I will put the word Barzakh there. Are you ready, my friend? Take it or leave it. And try not to laugh at yourself. Hajiz, Barzakh. If we go to the Arabic Arabic it says clearly a dry land which is between two body of water let us go to the Arabic Arabic hold on let us open the Arabic Arabic 
Uh, there we go. Actually, you know what? Why I'm doing this? Just hold on, hold on. I just remember this. Hold on. Let us make it make it more simple. <laughs> Because Allah in the Quran, He said even it is a land. Chapter 25, verse number 53. <laughs> Let us read the interpretation for this verse. You see the Arabic word it says? Okay, what is that? I will go to the same book of Ibn Kathir. Let us read together. Ibn Kathir, let us see if it's dry land or not. Chapter 25, verse number 53. What a comedy. What a comedy. Here we go. Are you ready, my friend? Now what you will do, you will pull your hair up, out. What you will do? You will jump from the top of the high mountain like your prophet? Let's read together. Here we go. And it's he who let the free two seas. This is a palatable and sweet and salty and bitter means he has a created two kinds of water, sweet and salty. The sweet water like the river and the spring and, and wells with the fresh and, uh, and su uh, sweet, sweet, uh, palatable water. This is the, was the view of Ibn Juraj. And then he continued, mean, without a doubt, without a doubt. Nowhere in the creation is the sea, which is the fresh and the sweet. Allah has told us about reality. So this is his servant, may realize the blessing of etc. And then he continue. Read carefully. So according to what they need themselves of their lands. And then meaning the salty and bitter, meaning this is salty and bitter and not easy to swallow. This is like the seas are unknown, are known in the east, west, etc., etc., etc. And then he says, and then he put a complete partition between them, meaning between the sweet water and the salty, which is a dry land. Do you see it, Abdul? Abdul, are you there? Muhammad Qasim. Do you see how they lie and how they? I mean, it's like somebody have a diarrhea, and he open his his private part and he flush it everywhere. And the poor me have to. I mean, they knew they are lying. They knew. Trust me, he knew his lying. Does it say a dry land? People, does it say in their scholar book dry land? And this is a very stupid scientific mistake because the fresh water, all of it is coming from the sea. What do you mean they don't mix? So Muhammad is trying to say, praise be to Allah, the one who made the fresh water and the salty water and he put a barrier between them, they don't mix. Because the foolish Muhammad, he think that the salty water and the fresh water, they are two different water. Allah created them separately. One is a fresh and one salty. So the fresh stay fresh forever and the salty stay uh, salty for, uh, forever. This is why he says he put between them a barrier. Just get out of here. You know what? I'm going to block you. Just go. I cannot take you no more. Tafsir is not a... Tafsir. Guys, Tafsir is not approved. <laughs> My friend, this stupid idiot, I have to say it to you. In Arabic, it says, وَحِجَرًا مَحَجُورًا Do you know what hajar mean? Coming from the word hajar. A rock stupid this is why he is saying a dry land this guy is not making science for you this is a pure Arabic get out of here don't ever come here I'm not going to lose my voice every time with, with, with the idiot liars I mean the second you don't have a dignity I have nothing to say to you all your scholar they say the same I challenge you to show me one of them says it's not a dry land and you, the one who don't have high school, is going to teach all the Islamic scholars, including your prophet and the Quran.
this is here is not about uh, uh, a fresh water going inside the sea no this is about Allah he said I put a partition a barrier complete you see guys do you see complete I mean are we blind does it say complete partition so it's complete that's it you don't touch each other this water and that water they don't touch each other so if you are blind if you are a fool this is your business don't waste my time go play with your kid with the kids in your age it says in the front of you complete partition and then the Muslim scholar himself says which is a dry land so it had to be above the water separating as an example I will type I will type in front of you but as a let us do it Barzakh Qanat Al Suwais. What Barzakh mean? Let us see. You see the same word? Barzakh. Do you see it? Barzakh Qanat Al Suwais. Okay, what is that? Here we go. There is a land separating between two waters. This is even what is called in Arabic. Barazahu as Suez. I have no place for stupidity. You want to argue, you know, you don't want to believe, you don't believe, it's your business. But don't argue with lying. I'm showing you even, you see that the, the funny is, we are showing them their Islamic scholars' words. And this guy who called himself Danish, I mean, I don't know what's wrong with your brain. Either you have a mental issues or you have mental issues. Because you said to me, Islam is bad. And now because you just saw a video, you are thinking Islam is good. What's wrong with you? You have mental issue, brother. They're fooling you. So they fabricate the words of the Quran to make it fit with something totally different what the Quran is saying that the stupid God of Islam claiming that this water and this water never mixed but this is absolutely false they mix go right now to Google type do water salty water and this uh, fresh water mix absolutely you don't need Google you can go to your kitchen my friend Make a cup of salty water and a cup of uh, fresh water and mix them together. Let us see if the fresh water stay fresh water, if they are separated. Guess what, brother? You will find that. Look, let, let us put them in a container, brother. And then you will find half of the container is a fresh water. You put the spoon in the right side, it's a fresh water. You put the spoon in the salt in the side in the left side, it's a salty water. Do it, do it, brother. <laughs> Who in the world gonna believe in this garbage? Water, salty water, and fresh water always mixed. What the what the what the science is speaking about have nothing to do with this. It always they mix, but because the different structure between them, it takes time for the fresh water and the salty water, especially if it's a massive account. No, you don't want to get any good explanation. Let me tell you why. Because. Why a stupid, silly video is affecting your mind? Why you did not search in Google, see if salty water and fresh water mix? Just because somebody, he says, and make a video, you believe it? You do not need me to debunk it. You have the internet, you have the computer. All what you need to do, go to Google search, do salty water and fresh water, they mix. Yes, they do. Here it says complete partition. They don't mix. They never mix. Read carefully. He let loose the two seas meeting together. How meeting together? Are the two seas meeting together? No. Between them a barrier which none of them can transgress. None of them. So the word lose here and, you know, yaltaqiyan is stupid. Because you just said there's a barrier between them. Uh, 
and then he continues saying, Is it he who had made the earth as a fixed abode? What the earth is fixed, and he has a place, the river in the midst, and he placed the mountain therein, and he set the barrier between the two seas. Do you see it? So the river, you see, he mentioned rivers here. Do you see rivers? Rivers. In the middle of what? In the middle of the earth. The same as the mountains. And then he set a barrier between the two seas. But the word seas is stupid. You see, this is why Ibn Kathir is saying, it's very well known that there's no seas for fresh water. Ibn Kathir is a guy who came more than 600 years after Muhammad, which means 1,200 years after Jesus. So this is a guy who is not born a long time ago compared to the rest. So he's smarter. He lives in Syria. He noticed that this is stupid. So he's saying, oh, there's no fresh water. But the, all the scholars, even they think that there is a sea. And this is what the Quran says. The Quran is saying there's two seas, which is a present a mistake in the language because there is no way a smart God, he will say there's two seas. The fresh water is not a sea. Did we explain it or still, still there somebody is confused? Very funny people. Hey, no, my friend Sharon, the water always mix. The water is always mix. There's no science says they don't mix. Not even a single stupid scientist will say such a thing. What about you drop, like, if you live in next to the beach, if you live in Indonesia, go tomorrow to the beach and drop uh, a container of Pepsi Cola in a location in the sea and try to drink from it right away after you drop it in the water. Just right in the same second. Put your cup there and get your Pepsi Cola back. You will find it became salty immediately. So don't be stupid. What science speak is something totally different. Do you see how, how frustrating this job is to explain to people? I mean, people, they have, I don't know what, uh, you, you know, we show them the reference, we show them what Islam is saying. This is the Muslim saying that, not me. And still they say to you, yeah. Eh, no. Okay, Danish. But you know, if I am you, Danish, I will search before somebody. You do not need me to debunk it. It's stupid, my friend. Those videos are made for the bunch of fool. They can fool only the one who is a fool. You see, you live in the age of computer, fast internet. There is internet now. The speed is one thousand. Imagine. Today you can you have a machine in your pocket and you can speak to someone who lives in China. Imagine, and yet you let a stupid video in YouTube fool you. And you need me to debunk it? Why? <clears throat> use your brain, my friend. God, he gave you a gift. Use it. Or you will lose it. Do we have any Muslim? Want to say something? And here, by the way, this is a proof that Islam is a cult. Why? Because why Muslims are lying about this th thing here, making it a miracle, when the fact, as you see, is totally different. What is the honesty? Why somebody, he believe in a God, and he claimed that his God teach him not to lie, and he fabricate something is not in the Quran. And as you see, in fact, this is a mistake in the Quran. This is a scientific mistake. The God of the Quran, he believed that Allah supposedly the one who made the Quran that Allah he set a barrier between the two seas they never met And this is why he placed mountains between them between the rivers and the sea so they will never met Do you see it? Between them, there is a barrier. None of them can transgress. That means it's forever. None of them can transgress. 
Who in here believe this is true? Isn't it all the fresh water we have is coming from the rain, which is coming from the steam, which is coming from the ocean? Isn't it the cloud? Is the water which vibrate from the ocean? This God here is saying they never met. So which one of them is saying the truth? A person who went to high school, elementary school, he knew better than Allah. Right? Anyone? Don't make those fool fool you. Already they are a fool. If a fool can fool you, I mean, how fool you are to be fooled by a fool. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's really, uh, it's really uh, uh, embarrassing that if a fool can fool you, so how fool you are to be fooled by a fool? Somebody believe that there is a God who will give him versions in each one of them. Her butt is one mile. And this guy who believe in one mile but he fool you so how fool are you and by the way I'm really scared of this uh, one mile but I mean why where I'm going to find her in underwear well she can how she can wash her panty and if her butt is one mile what about her <clears throat> What I would do with it? Do you think we can go and do fishing there? Or maybe we can do diving. Yeah, this is what Muhammad he said. I don't know if I can find it here in English. Hold on. Uh, we cannot find it here in English. Yeah, we cannot find it. Uh, Sharon, uh, don't tell me broader. What a broader? What a broader mean? What is that? What a broader mean? I, I don't understand. What a broader? Broader, what is what is that a broader? I understand you. According to Muhammad, Jibril, the story of Jibril appear only with Muhammad. There is nowhere, you know. The Quran never say actually, like you see, the Quran is very, very funny book. Where in the Quran it says that Muhammad he met Jibril? Who, who is a Muslim want to show me that? Where in the Quran it says Muhammad he met with Jibreel? Any Muslim? All right, I'm not going to keep this video for long. Actually, already we are. You see, I say I'm not going to keep it for long as if I was speaking to far for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, uh, so people, they can download it. And the video, the previous video, which we made already a few years hours ago, a few hours ago, uh, you can find it. You can search the title in YouTube. It's all over. Uh, and this video will be there too. What time the debate tomorrow? I think by noon time will be live on air. So maybe like I will go maybe by 11, 11.30. You know, because tomorrow is Sunday. You know, we will see. What is the bigger miracle Jesus uh, turning water into wine 
or plane crashing, uh, plane crashing and baby surviving. You know them. You see, as a human being, sometimes there's there's two kind of a human being. There's a human being who fought from his anus, and there's a, a human being who fought from his mouth. What does have to do with this? If a baby, if an airplane crash, and there is one or two survive, that is not really a miracle. And I will explain to you, potato. Because obviously the plane did not really crush totally. If the plane re plane go in fire or destroy totally, nobody will survive. Impossible. Actually, if the plane crush in the high in the high high level, you will die from the freezing before you can arrive. So if an airplane is trying to land and this little plane, most of people who were inside they die. A few of them survive. This is very normal actually. This is not a miracle. We can say it's a miracle, God save you, but it's not really a miracle. In war, my friend, two armies shooting each other. The majority of the people are injured, not the one who died. The majority are injured. So a bomb fell down, 10 they die, and 100 a injured. So does that mean they are? this is a miracle? This is your fantasy. When we say, that Jesus he turned the water into wine that's mean he was able to turn something into something else have different structures without using anything just by giving an order the guy who was in the airplane he was alive and then the airplane he crushed he's still alive did you see how many videos in YouTube about a child fading down from the sixth floor and he did not die That is a stupid statement. But anyway, whatever Jesus he said, they will not like it. What about saying to me, which one is better? Uh, a child, he, uh, you know, you know what? I hope that's one day an airplane will fall down just on you alone. So you can tell us about this miracle. What do you think? I want you to rent an airplane, brother. Helicopter, brother. And crush yourself, brother. And then you tell me about the miracle of Jesus and the crushing with the airplane. Tell me after you do it. I'm joking. Don't do it. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Don't do it. I'm joking. It's crazy. Stupid people. Silly. Farting statement. You have to fart. Well, you can, you know. Silly. <clears throat> When somebody, you know, like, uh, you know, in the Middle East, when somebody want to go, like we have tradition, if somebody want to marry a girl uh, and, uh, and uh, the guy, he don't, he just, he's a stupid, his family, before he go to ask for the hand of the girl, we have tradition, you have to send your father with your mother and you go with them. If you are a stupid idiot, the family, they will spend like half one hour before they go, they say, don't talk there, okay? If they ask you, let us answer you. We will answer. You don't talk. Don't talk. Because the second you talk, they will refuse to give you their daughter. And this is you, my friend. You go between a bunch of people says, Hey, which one is better, my friend, Miracle? A child, he fell in an airplane, crash and survive, or Jesus transforming the water into wine? Did you try to ask this question in, in the front of the mirror before you say it to me? Just do it. I feel sorry for your wife if you are married. I will not be surprised, really, if your wife, she left you. I mean, who in the world want to stay with a guy like this? Unbelievable. Uh, CP is nafty. Who is nafty? You know, people are, I don't know. You see, people, they say things, they supposedly they're trying to insult us. But, okay, try. Just give it a try and wait for the response. We will respond to you, no problem. And you get the response, what they can do. <clears throat> uh. 
Look at the situation of Christians in China and North Korea. My friend, the situation of Christians in China or North Korea is wonderful, and I will explain to you why. I, I was in, I did not go to North Korea. I went to China, and I uh, I saw how how amazing the the number of uh, Christians growing in China. Actually, I believe in China in less maybe than twenty, maybe thirty, fifty years. I hope before I die, is going to be the biggest Christian country in the earth. Because the number of those who convert to Christianity in China is unbelievable. Go right now. You see, China is a communist country. Everybody knows. Type churches in China. Just type it in Google. You will be amazed. After all what the government of China trying to do to stop Christianity, the number of churches is a growing unbelievable way. And Christianity today from zero to be, uh, you know, the second largest belief after communist, <laughs> which obviously people, they believe in it because they have to. Give them freedom and we will see. Uh, let us do this. <clears throat> Chinese government destroying churches non-stop. Almost this is news every day. Chinese authority demolish well-known church. China closing Christian churches in Easter crackdown. This is 2019-2018. As a China crackdown on churches, the Christians declare. You know, you can read the, you know. So the number of Christians in China is going very big and they don't know what to do with the Christians and you see they have no excuse to stop Christianity it's not like Islam teaching violence and terrorism those people they don't teach violence they don't teach even revolution against the government they don't the only problem is they are not communist so you know Sharon you want me to block you aren't you you are spamming the text and you keep repeating yourself. Go. I don't want to see you here in the chat no more. Some people, they are exactly like kids. They sit in your lap and they start playing with your beard. What's wrong with you? Seriously, what's wrong with people? Did you think I did not see your question? But your question does not fit with my topic. And your question is silly. And I answered you. Already I said, according to the Quran, nowhere it's mentioned that Muhammad even spoke to Jibreel. So what's wrong with you? Even in the Quran did not say that there's a guy, his name is Jibreel, who speak to Muhammad. Repeating, repeating. If Muhammad did not mention, you think Moses is mentioned? This is a China, my friend. People think China, you see, this is a China. Look at the churches. It's everywhere. Everywhere. You like it, you don't like it, it's everywhere. In the beginning it was underground and now it is above the ground. They are high and they put in a big, huge cross in the top. This is a China. So China is the coming giant Christian country and sooner or later this regime will collapse. Uh, Bigfoot, there is no, uh, there is no way to compare between them, and your question does not make sense. Can you explain? The difference between Musa seeing burning bushes, Jesus turning water into okay. What the connection between Jesus turning water into wine and the connection of Musa seeing burning bushes? You tell me. I mean, you have your own logic. I don't understand it. When you try to compare between things, you have to bring something logical between them. What is the logic between them? Nothing. 
Moses, he saw God, spoke to God. And because God is a glorious, you cannot see him. So he saw a burning bushes, but the bushes is not God. Now, what does this have to do with Jesus turning water into wine? You tell me. You are more intelligent than me. I'm learning from you. Okay, I must tell him he want to talk to me. All right. Let us see. We'll try to call him. I cannot find this at this ID. It's not to be found. <clears throat> anyway, so you know there is there is something very important we have to remember. When when Muslims they make for you a video, and the purpose of the video is to convince you. No problem. I mean they have the right to do that. They're trying to bring people into their religion. But the question is how you receive whatever people say to you like me now christian prince he's saying something to you defending christianity okay but christian prince at the end of the day he's a christian and maybe he is not even being truthful or maybe he's truthful but he himself is a fool so are you going to take what people says to you and believe in it no you have to examine it by yourself only the foolish person is the person who takes things without examination. Is that fair, guys? Is that fair? Doesn't matter who is the one that is talking to you. He's a Christian, he is a Jew, he is a Hindu, he's a Buddha, he's an atheist, he's a Christian. It doesn't matter. You will be a fool if you accept what people say is people are people. You know, people they are corrupt, people are liars, people are fornicators, people are thieves, people are criminals, people are drug dealers. People are, you know, whatever they are. So you have to use your brain unless you don't have one. So when somebody says to me, the Quran has science, while the Quran is the book of his stupidity, the sun set in the murky water. Who said that? Not only Allah, he said that. Even Muhammad said that. Okay. So the Quran is the book of science, but Muhammad believed that the sun set in a spring of water. Hmm. How scientifically accurate Muhammad is. I mean, how stupid it is to believe that this is a book of science. Is that Muhammad saying that or me? Do I need to even present Muhammad more to you? Obviously, he's a false man. Correct? That's it. The story is over. There is no way a prophet, he is a prophet of God, will say such a thing. That's it. I do not need to tell you more about Muhammad. That's it. This guy is a fraud. He is teaching his followers where Muhammad he is getting this. This is from the Quran. The Quran said the, set, the sun set in the murky water. And the Muslims, when they try to defend the Quran, just to show you how the fraud worked, they say, oh, Allah did not say that. Allah, he said that the guy who went there, he thought the sun set in the murky It doesn't say that. A big fat lie. Allah reporting the found or the finding of this man. He found. It's not the man talking. He walked in a way until he reached the sitting of the sun. Actually, it says the sitting place of the sun. Where is the sitting place of the sun? He found it, found what? The sun set in a spring of murky water. The, the, they try to defend. They say, oh, he saw it in the sitting in the ocean. So, But do you see the ocean there? 
it doesn't say ocean it says a spring of water the ocean is not a spring of water is it is it where is the where is the ocean spring of water the reason for believing in a spring of water to be where the Sun set because many people they saw through history in the in the in the earth there is some places they have a boiling water come in supposedly what what is heating them either a volcano the magma etc so the, there is a legend legion says that the Sun go and sit inside the water and heat it this is where the Sun asleep and the water boil and this is why this water is murky that's it yeah Yellowstone is exactly where the Sun set every day and when the Muslim they try to defend they say it does not mean that he thought we find that Muhammad who cannot keep his mouth shut thank to God that he don't he get himself busted and he you know he he he, he exposed the lies of those who try to defend Muhammad Muhammad he explained the verse I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah S A W S F M A A A A A short wave who was riding the donkey while the sun was sitting his ask look Muhammad he don't even Muhammad voluntarily he want to share his knowledge man look how good this guy is for free for free I mean we should appreciate the man do you know where this set Muhammad is asking the guy behind him in a donkey this is a donkey class that I replied Allah and his apostle knows best Muhammad knowledge is from the knowledge of Allah that's it is God he said it's set in a spring of warm water here we go ah, this guy is a soldier of Allah let's see how good this soldier is soldier of Allah Answer, Mr. Soldier of Allah. Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Yes, I do hear you. Yes, I do hear you. <laughs> is this uh, Christian poop, apparently? This is what? This is what? Christian poop. Christian poop? Christian poop? <laughs> Oh man, this is going to be so fun. I so know, especially, you see, you're trying to insult me. I'm not going to hang up on you. But in the front of us, we have your prophet saying that the sun set in the murky water. What do you say? Uh, I'm not here to answer your question. Why so you in the Bible, answer? Because you are calling me to do Bible, poop. You are calling me, you are, you are calling me to do movement. poop. Shut up and get lost. Coward, you are you are a Muslim soldier. What kind of soldier? He says I cannot answer you. Christian poop. <laughs> I'm not here to answer you. So what are you here to do? Poop. Go and do poop with the prophet. And don't forget to use the three stones. Hmm. What do you think? <laughs> they cannot answer me, but they try to insult me. And they doesn't care. I don't care. Insult as much as you wish. Do your best. This is the best you can do. Okay. Call me names as you wish. Still, people are leaving Islam left and right. Right? <clears throat> Any Muslim? And brother, this is going to be funny. I mean, how funny is going to be more than a prophet he believed that the sun set in the murky water? How funny is going to be? Hmm? And yet he claimed that this is God speaking to him, the God teaching him. This is truly funny.
but because you're ashamed of your prophet you don't want to talk about your prophet anyone any Muslim have the courage and the knowledge you want to call without calling names <laughs> this is a Christian poop <laughs> let me tell you about poop my friend here we go an Arab man he came to your prophet and he was walking with him Uh, actually, he was talking first with a, with a, with an Ar other Arab man, a Muslim. He was talking to Arab man. He said that your friend talking about Muhammad, the Arab man asking the Muslim guy, I see your friend has been teaching you about experiment. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say just experiment. It says al khara. You know what al khara mean? I'm not going to say the word. I'm going to take it to Google Translation. Hold on. I will copy the word khara and I will put it in Google Translation. Well, maybe Google Translation will not understand al khara. This is what your prophet was busy doing, teaching the Muslims. You will not believe even what the hadith is saying. He was teaching them the guy he was saying to him the prophet was doing teaching you how to do s h i t you believe it this is the hadith word as it is and this is google translation do you see it this is the hadith word i copy it as it is hmm? here we go I will do it in the front of your eyes. I will do it again. Al Khara'a or Al Khira'a. I will go to Google Translation. I will delete the old word. I will paste this, the new word, which is the same. And this is a translation. What the Prophet was teaching them? And you are calling me poop? Let us see what Jesus was teaching his disciple and what Muhammad was teaching his disciple. <laughs> and this is the hadith in front of you. Did I make it up? No. Here we go. Read it. And this is your Muslim translation. What do you say? Allah taught him this Allah taught Muhammad how to do poop why before Islam people do not know how to do poop what people before Islam they used to do they do it from their nose and why he is saying you have to use the three stones everything in Islam is a three and why stones anyone he was why he forbid the Muslims from using bones or dunk Anyone knows why? Because he said this is the food of the genie. You have to face the Qibla, the Kaaba, when you clean your bum. What does that mean? So you live in America now, you have to face the Kaaba when you clean your bum? Hmm? Sorry guys, this guy he, he's the one who mentioned the word poop. What we can we can say? Hmm? What we can say?
but you can tell how much pain this person he have in his voice. I feel sorry for him. You know what I mean? This poor person. He, this person, I guarantee you, is leaving Islam because obviously I'm making him so angry. Muhammad he said I heard Allah post on me please etc he is saying that the inmate of paradise inmate would eat and drink but would neither spit nor pass water nor void experiment Muslims where the food will go and that's mean your prophet he lied to you didn't he say you will have 70 years orgasm so how you will have 70 year orgasm but yet nothing is coming out of you. And where will the food will go? One way. The only way for that, you are going to get fatter and bigger and bigger. So you eat and you drink, but you will not spit, nor, nor pee, nor do poo, poo So where the food will go? In different hadith Muhammad he said uh, look look even in the time of Muhammad look the, the, the Christians they were making fun of Muhammad look at this the Jews the Christians and the Jews look at this but regarding the Jews and the Christians for the Jews disbelieve Muhammad and the Christian disbelieve in paradise and say that they were ne neither meals or drink therein. The Christians from the beginning they said to Muhammad, This is stupid. And Muhammad he says, Oh, those people they broke the, the bridge with Allah. What Allah? We don't believe in Allah anyway. He could not answer them. The Christian they say that there is no food, there's no sex in heaven. So what do you say? They broke the bridge with Allah? What is that? Who is the Lord of food in heaven? Anyone knows? The best food of who is the one who will eat the most in heaven? Muhammad, look at this. And here they are saying the best food of people in, uh, of, of this world and the people of paradise is meat. Meat? In the heaven, what meat? You will slaughter what you would do. Let us continue. Muhammad, he is doing poo-poo. Once of he was in etc. with the Prophet carrying water pot for his ablution and for his cleaning his private part. While he was following him, carrying it, i.e. the pot, the Prophet said, who, who, who is this? He said, I, I am Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira is like this, the, the idiot who have no shame, walk, walking behind Muhammad when he is doing poo, poo The Prophet said, bring me stones in order to clean my private parts. What private part? Where, what, what, do you want to, what do you want to clean exactly? And don't bring any bones or any must dunk. Abu Huraira went uh, in the narration, he says. So I brought some stones carrying them in the corner of my rope till I put them by the side of Muhammad. Muhammad doing poop with the guy, he put them next to him. When he finished, I walked with him. I asked him, What about the bones and the animal dunk? He said, They are the food of the genie. They are what? The food of the genie. The genie, they eat bones. And anyone knows how they eat bones? Anyone knows? Who remember? The bones, when the genie, they want to eat them, Allah will make the bones. They are bones. They look for us bones. 
But when the genie they grabbed them, Allah He made them full of meat. So the genie they eat poopoo and they eat bones with meat. And then the dialect of the jinn of Nasabin came to me and how nice those genie were and asked me to remain of a human food. Uh, the, the genie they asked Muhammad, tell your followers not to do that to our food. Don't don't let them clean their ass with the bones. We eat it. Like what? The genie told Muhammad, tell the people not to clean their ass with the boobs. And look, Muhammad, he did not tell his people. He waited and long after, and now he remember. Do you see how decent Muhammad is? If the, if the genie asked you a long time ago, why now you remember when the guy is bringing you bones to clean your bum? Why did not tell the people right away? I was with them and told me don't do that. I invoked Allah for them that they would never pass by a bone or animal dunk, but food for on them. I think we have to stop here, otherwise you will have a, a poopoo -poo night. Uh, sorry guys, this guy, he is the one who uh, called me and he said the word poopoo. -poo. So, I mean, he is the one who brought that to himself. Obviously, your prophet, go and read. You see, the Muslim, they say, there is a verse in the Bible that people, it's a prophecy, that about people, they will cook using the dunk, but they will not eat the dunk. And actually, until now, in even in many countries, including Islamic countries, including the Middle East, they use dunk for a fuel. This is what the Bible is speaking about, that a human being will humiliate it, will suffer. <clears throat> Let me show you some pictures. Most of countries in the world, especially the poor ones, before the oil and before anything, this is their fuel. And this is my friend, Middle Eastern fuel for centuries and thousands of years. They collect the dunk of the of the cows or the goats, mostly the cow, because the cow they make big one. And then they mix it with the grass, dry grass. And then they they dry it like this, they attach it to the wall, as you see. And the Muslim they say to you, the Bible says that you will cook using dunk. You Muslims, you do that. Not only Muslims, not only Jewish, not only you know, all the world, the 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 oil and the gas is something new. This is what people use for fuel, especially in an area where there is no wood. All of this is poo poo. And by the way, it does amazing burning. Actually, one of the best food, uh, the best bread, is the one who is cooked using this fuel. Let me show you. Even the Quran used the word tanur, which is not in Arabic. <clears throat> this is an Aramaic word. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, I'm trying to find all right uh, if you see let me put in the screen do you see this here this hole simply the fuel inside is the dunk of the cows or their goats mostly cows so this dunk they put it in the down and they set fire on it and it make an extreme extreme powerful heat and then they wait until the fire start going down and then they do this uh, uh, 
the dough they slash it in the wall of this thing and this bread will turn into a very delicious yummy bread actually this is the most delicious food, uh, bread ever you can eat but it's good only if it's a fresh like right away not uh, not after some time because it dry fast it's called in Arabic tannur. and all of Muslims around Islamic countries this is their favorite bread So they make a fun of a verse in the Bible, but the fact they, they practice this verse every day in their life. Thanks to the Western, they discover for you the oil. Otherwise, you would be doing this until now. Actually, until now, they are doing it. And by the way, this is very delicious bread. So what? It's a fire. You know, dunk or not, it's a fire. The fire will clean anything. The fire will kill any germs. So... Uh, I miss it now. I wish I can have some. <laughs> yeah, this bread is amazing, by the way. It's really amazing. Very, very, very tasty bread. No? See how they do it? Look. Uh, actually, I saw it live. I mean, when I was a kid, once we went to a village, and I saw an old woman. She had the dog. And she spread the dough and then she wait until as you see in the this is a they call it tanur and then she slammed the, the she have like a pillow uh let me see if i can find you the pillow here we go you see the woman she is carrying a pillow in her hand do you see the pillow do you see it there's a pillow she put the dough in the top and then she slam it with the wall of this uh, oven and then it's going to stuck because the oven wall is very dry, hot, and the dough is very, it's a, it's a fresh, you know, it's a, a full of water. So she slid it there and it's going to stick. And then the more it's getting ready, the more it's going to be easy to take it off. So they wait like a few minutes and then she grab it before it fail. They don't wait until it fail because it's going to fail, you know, as you see. Pillow is the boot to put the da in the top of it when you slash it. Not a pillow to sleep. <clears throat> you see the pillow in her hand? In order to keep the shape of the of the da. You know, she used the pillow, she would place it on it, and then she hold the pillow in her right hand, and then she smash it with the wall. And this is a very delicious bread, actually. Look how beautiful this bread. But this is not the same, actually. You see how it goes? Look. This is the... This is after the dunk, go, uh, like, is, is, uh, the, the heat is dying. You just put you 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 slash the the dough in the wall. It's going to stick, and uh, when it's almost going to be ready, you you can tell it's coming out. You grab it right away. Yeah, this is very very uh, very tasty. And the Muslim they make fun. Uh, the Bible says. The Bible says. Ignorant. See all of this. Actually, you can do that in your home if you if you live in a, especially if you have a big yard, you can, you can design this thing in your home. And you do not need to use donk; you can use a, a, a normal wood. You know. But you need to learn how to do it. There's many videos on YouTube teach you how to do it. And look how strong. The heat is. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I think we have enough for today. Tomorrow we will have Dr. Hassan, peace upon him. 
he will debate me and he will talk about uh, Quran and science and as you know dr. Hassan he debated me last time and he is a genius he agree that yes the Sun set in the murky water and he says uh, I said to him about this the Quran saying that he said the science need to learn more so when he can he confirm yes he believed the Sun set in murky water but the but the science is not is short of knowledge okay science is short of knowledge that is the problem it's not the problem in the Quran it is science short of knowledge true story all right guys I want to say thank you for being here and tomorrow we will be live again um, maybe around uh, 11 11 30 my time so be be here if you care and we will have dr. Hassan bring your popcorn and uh, don't sit in the chair because you will die laughing all right so thank you for being here may the Lord bless you and until we see you again soon Christ is Lord and Islam is false and we prove it every single day I mean to that thank you and take care bye-bye